I've been fortunate to have done a lot of traveling before the pandemic, and some of my best memories have been in big cities like New York, Tokyo, and Osaka. So as someone that's always had a love for isometric art, the moment I discovered the isometric grid tools in Affinity Designer, there was one illustration I knew I had to do. The purpose of this video is to give you a broad overview of my process from sketch to final. I hope it will give you some good ideas on how to approach your own art. So the first step and the most important step for me when I do any artwork is doing thumbnailing. So I will get out a sketchbook and I just draw a bunch of small little thumbnails, just exploring different angles and whatever ideas strike me at the time. So I did a number of angles and I was kind of tossing out between like a looking up view, like looking up at a city versus looking down into a city. Some of the key things that I'm looking at when I'm doing thumbnailing is just identifying the main shapes uh, identifying the foreground, background, uh, midground, and also just ensuring that at a quick glance, just from this simple thumbnail, I'm capturing the essence of the feelings that I want to communicate in my drawing. If I can't communicate them in such a small, uh, efficient thumbnail, there's no way I'll be able to communicate them when we blow this thing up and start detailing everything. Purpose of the first draft is to get pixel to canvas, block out main shapes and test one main question. Is this gonna work? It's not about being perfect, it's about testing if the essence of the thumbnail will work at a larger size. So far I was happy with the draft, but then I hit a roadblock. To move forward I needed to refine the concept, but I had two problems. Problem one, complexity of forms. Right now I had a bunch of vectors randomly placed. You could call it abstract, but I wanted this to be more precise, so I needed to plan out each building and how they sit in the space. Problem number two was lighting. Once I have all the structures built, I'll need realistic lighting and shadows. So then I thought, what about 3D? Recently I've been following a hashtag on Instagram for a software called Magic of Voxel where people do these small low res 2D looking 3D models and I think they're really cute and they're really fun. So I downloaded the software and eventually I came up with a plan. The plan was to build the basic city structures in Magic of Voxel, bring a rendered screenshot of it into Affinity Designer, and then redraw and add detailing using the render as a reference layer. To build the structures I created the layout of a city, then used the extrude tools to raise the voxels to varied heights to create interest. Sounds simple, right? Well, this part took much longer than I thought it would, and it was really crucial. All this time spent fiddling around with various heights and sizes of blocks was all about composition. I had to think really hard about where to place buildings in relation to the camera to create a distinct foreground, midground, and background. I added two main avenues for flying cars and trains to draw the eye up through the composition. After a day or two of fiddling, I got to a point that I was happy with. And this was my final render. Bringing it into Affinity Designer, I needed to ensure that the camera in Magic of Voxel was as close as possible to the isometric grid inside of Affinity Designer. And if you guys know like a proper way to do this, uh, let me know. But basically what I did was I just rotated the camera in Magic of Voxel and um, there is a setting where you can set it to isometric, but it's not absolutely perfect. But yeah, I basically just eyeballed it, rendered it or exported the image and then just took it into Affinity Designer and tried to align it as close as possible to a set grid in Affinity Designer. And during this stage, I kind of remind myself, it doesn't need to be perfect. Like I just needed it to be close enough because I knew eventually I'd be covering up everything with uh, vector art anyway. So, I mean, this 3D image, while as awesome it is, as it is and as excited as I was about it, like I just had to tell myself, this is just an interim stage and it's gonna be covered up, so it doesn't matter. The other thing I had to be really conscious of when I was setting this up is also the grid level, like the level of detail that I wanna have in the final image. So you can set various subdivisions to your grid and I had to make sure that there were enough subdivisions in my grid to allow me to do detail work on like a smaller, like fine grain level. So some things I used to pick my grid size were the sizes of windows on the trains, also doors on the trains. I also tried to draw humans and use them as a sense of scale. But yeah, basically I just needed to make sure that the grids were detailed enough to um, capture all the detail that I wanted to capture.
Once everything was set up, it was now a matter of redrawing everything as vectors. First, blocking out all the buildings and shadows, and then embellishing everything with small details like windows, ventilation shafts, trees, the train station, and neon lights. It was super fun doing this, imagining what each building would be, and using detail to control the eye through the composition. To recap how far we've come, here's a look at the process from first draft to final. Okay, so the point of this video is not to give you like a step-by-step -step guide or like, you know, click this and do that. It's more about showing the overall process from an idea through to execution and the final product. What I'm really proud about is, and I didn't realize that at the time, but now when I think back, it's like, oh yeah, I did that. But basically it's the idea that I started with the idea, I'm saying idea too much, uh, but basically, yeah, like I started with a concept that I was excited about. I had a vision for what I wanted to do. And then I went out and sought the tools and the software to allow me to do that. And it sounds really basic and straightforward, but I think in the past, and especially when I was younger, I used to always do things the other way around. So I'd start with the technology or the tools or the software and then think, what can I make with this? Uh, which is the wrong way to think about things. Like, And I found now that I think the other way, like it's opened up so much more possibilities because it's like, just think whatever you want to do. Like just come up with anything your imagination can think of and there'll be a way to figure it out. There'll be a way to achieve it. And the real superpower behind thinking that way is that it gives you the motivation and the excitement to uh, learn things that maybe you were dreading or disliked or just always struggled with in the past. Like, for example, I, I always struggled with 3D software in the past and I just found it hard to have the motivation to learn it, even though I knew this was something important that I should learn and um, I just never had the motivation for it until this project. So uh, yeah, that's really what I wanted to say with this video. Uh, if you found it useful, please leave it a like. And also if you like the artwork, please go to my website, jaywalkerpictures.com. Uh, there you can pick up a print or also a digital wallpaper pack. Anyway, thanks for watching guys and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye.